Welcome to DeFi, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. This week we speak to Zaki Manian, co-founder of Sommelier Protocol. Good morning, Zaki. Thanks for being with us today. Please tell us who you are and how did you get into crypto? What is your rabbit hole story? Okay, uh, I'm Zaki. I've been in crypto since uh, 2014. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. Um, I helped build Cosmos. Um, but like, basically my story is um, I got into crypto because uh, I was starting to get interested in security, cryptography, distributed systems, um, spent more and more time going down that rabbit hole, building various things. Um, then when I, uh, you know, as I sort of, so first I started out, I built an enterprise blockchain or a company called SkewChain, still around. Um, uh, we were doing trade finance on blockchains, learned a lot about traditional finance. Um, but along the way, uh, I met lots. Of, we were we worked very closely with lots of people who were in the open source crypto community. Um, we had this conference in our office called Crypto Economic Con, um, and like there used to be these mailing this mailing list called the uh, Crypto Economic Research Forum. We invited everyone, so people like Vlad, Vitalik, uh, Jay Kwan, um, Ethan Buckman, Jay and Ethan met each other th- at that conference. You know, so we ended up playing like a very formative role in like sort of the current contemporary crypto space from our tiny little enterprise blockchain startup. Um, and then when we decided to go out into the world, we went out in the world and focused on. Um, we went out in the world and focused on uh, so on like selling to banks. And what I realized after selling to banks for a while was. Is that like all this stuff that I kind of considered a hobby, which was like open source, scalable public blockchains. Um, these were like the real long term disruptive technology and like selling blockchains to banks was basically a pointless endeavor. Um, so then 2017 started focusing only on public blockchains. 2018 worked full time on Cosmos to help launch the Cosmos network. Um, 2019 sort of started to build out Cosmos. Uh, 2020, uh, this famous thing called Gore, the great organizational restructuring of Cosmos, um, happened, um, finished IBC at the beginning of 2021, started Sommelier, um, started working on new applications on top of Cosmos, and here we are today. And how did you end up building Sommelier from that? I've honestly found Ethereum DeFi, like, Cosmos DeFi has been is it like an exciting emerging space? But when we started Sommelier, Cosmos DeFi hadn't even really started yet. Um, And I've almost always been fascinated by like the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem and really wanted to build something that would showcase the combined strengths of the Cosmos technology stack and the Ethereum uh, DeFi stack. Um, And so that's how we arrived at the Sommelier design, which is this sort of hybrid architecture of a Cosmos app chain um, controlling Ethereum smart contracts. If you were at a dinner party talking to someone who's new to crypto, how would you explain Sommelier in simple terms? Okay, so there is this thing called DeFi which are programs that live on blockchains that provide the services that you typically get from a financial institution. So trading, lending, borrowing, etc. And anyone can interact with these programs. And what's really inspiring about this idea of DeFi is that you could, you could live in a world um, where unlike traditional finance, where you have to be, you know, to really access the core financial systems, to directly operate on exchanges, for instance, you know, you have to jump through a lot of hoops, get special licenses, sort of be an important person. Um, but DeFi has the possibility of opening up this to everyone. But we have a problem, which is DeFi has become more and more complex as DeFi has matured. And so at the beginning of DeFi summer, you know, you had this world in which, you know, any person would know how to use DeFi and know how to be a borrower or a depositor or a lender or a market maker in DeFi. But now we live in a world where these are actually quite specialized skills as like DeFi has become more and more capital efficient, more and more sophisticated. And what Sommelier is really about is like bringing DeFi back to the masses allowing people, anyone to be able to participate in DeFi uh, through the assistance of the Sommelier protocol. What problem is this algorithm-based DeFi assistant solving and how? Yeah. So the problem that it solves is that participating in a DeFi protocol is complex. It requires continuous management. You have to constantly be observing what's happening in the markets. 
um, holding these positions can be quite you know complex. They can be go from being wildly profitable to wildly unprofitable um, in uh, uh, in you know relatively short periods of time. Uh, so what Sommelier does is it provides sort of an always. Uh, available, always online, always watching assistant um, who's assisting people. And we, uh, in the same way that a sommelier, which is where the name comes from, helps, you know, someone understand the complex world of wine. Um, the sommelier protocol makes the interacting with DeFi protocols, holding different positions much easier. For the average user who has a little bit of understanding of how Web2 trading platforms like eToro yeah. operate, what is the extra piece of knowledge they need in order to use Sommelier? So the simplest thing, for instance, is, you know, when you are on all of these platforms right now, you can, you have, you know, you can buy and sell. You, the crypto markets are very volatile. But when to buy, when to sell, how to manage a position. What Sommelier does is we actually create these assets that we call strategy tokens. And strategy tokens can be held by anyone. Um, and those strategy tokens that are being held by anyone can represent sort of an active managed strategy, a strategy that decides when to buy, decides when to sell, according to some preset sets of parameters. And, you know, we think that, you know, compared to the average user, that'll outperform. It'll also do things like capital preservation for people, like, i.e., you know, selling high and buying low. You know, helping dampen the volatility of the crypto markets, um, which is a tricky thing to do and requires, you know, if you were just a, an average person trading. Mm -hmm. You mentioned strategy creation. How does one become a strategy creator? Do they own their strategies and what responsibilities do they bear? Mostly what strategy providers do is they, they have a proprietary strategy um, that lives off chain that helps them decide... Um, when and how to rebalance uh, a given strategy. So a rebalance can be a trade. It can be moving from one DeFi protocol to another. This concept of rebalances is largely driven by, by this mechanism of you know, running this proprietary strategy. One of the reasons why we believe proprietary strategies are important is because we want people to really bring alpha to the platform. We want you know, the widest possible community of strategists to pursue... Uh, To, uh, to onboard on the platform and provide strategies. If everything had to be open source, you wouldn't get very high quality strategies. Who are Sommelier's competitors, if there are any, and what makes Sommelier stand out? You know, there's a couple of different categories that Sommelier is like. So on one hand, there's a, a natural comparison between something like Yearn and Sommelier. But Yearn strategies are static. Um, they don't change over time. Where, you know, as market conditions change, those strategies become... Um, less and less profitable, um, as was happening under current market conditions. Sommelier strategies are actively managed and can be responsive to market conditions. So you can, you know, you can continue to, they can continue to optimize as markets change. Um, then you have other things like set protocol and enzyme, um, which are also sort of this like on-chain managed fund. But in those cases, the manager of the or the execute the strategist has like much more control in those platforms. Whereas the Sommelier protocol actually uses the sommelier blockchain to further constrain like what a strategist can do the possibility exists of the validator set on that blockchain actually removing a strategist all of these things are possible within the sommelier system okay so if you had to evaluate the potential risks and vulnerabilities in uh, sommelier protocol inner and external what would they be We do a lot of things. There's like a very risk-oriented design to Sommelier. So for instance, Sommelier tokens are never, like while Sommelier is its own chain, the tokens are never bridged. So like the tokens always stay um, on their originating blockchain on Ethereum L1, which is live. Um, so you're not taking that much bridge risk. There is smart contract risk with the Sommelier seller contracts, and we've invested a lot in audits, um, and our smart contract development process is very robust. Um, but there's always risk there. Um, You know, and then the question is really, you know, um, so like our current trading strategies don't involve any leverage. Um, so there's not as much opportunity for things to go catastrophically wrong. Um, but, and like, you know, the currently live strategies is Ethereum, Bitcoin and USDC, all very liquid assets. What is Sommelier's revenue model? And another question bundled together. How do you approach gas fees for users in rebalancing? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So Sommelier, these, I mean, these things are, are related. Sommelier strategies, every strategy has a rev share, where it's a percentage of management fees. Um, so there's a management fee and a performance fee on every seller, and a percentage of that management fee falls back to, 
flows back to uh, SOM token stakers. Um, so basically, there's a revenue capture on the profits of strategies. You mentioned sellers. Sellers? What are sellers and sellers strategies? Are, sellers are interchangeable with strategies. Okay, perfect. What have been some of your most painful challenges? Could be regulations, could be... Just name a few. So we have a very complex architecture specifically because we've designed the system to explore like a novel space uh, in the regulatory landscape. There really is nothing in traditional finance that I, we believe is like equivalent to sommelier, but all of the checks and balances we put in the system. But as a result, we built a very complex protocol. Um, and it's just taken a while to get those pieces together. And right now what we're doing is we're, we're, we're trying to like both figure out how to take this like very new concept of a strategy token and make it visible and available to the most number of people. And we're trying to uh, figure out like what is the best way to like optimize that user experience so people understand what a strategy token is. Okay. Is there anything holding Sommelier Protocol back right now, if any? And uh, what would you like to see working better for the future? Um, right now, Sellers V1 are basically long-only positions. We can only hold spot positions. Um, we are soon to release Sellers V2, our new strategy system, and that can hold any position in DeFi, so it becomes possible to go short. Um, and it really expands the space of what strategists can do. We had a bunch of people building on top of Sellers V2 at the ETH Lisbon Hackathon. So yeah, I mean, the ne next big thing for us is getting Sellers V2 out and, and expanding the, n the number of all kinds of sellers that we have. DeFi has recently woken up the bear, not the bear market, but the actual bear institutions and governments. What are your forecasts in terms of the relationships between governments and the DeFi ecosystem? We will see more of Alex Pertsev cases. Or, uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of, you know, and there's a real challenge as a DeFi builder, right? You're like, to build a system that is very resistant and poses challenges to the regulator and, and like forces them to sort of open up the conversation of like, how should be these things regulated rather than just like giving them easy, low hanging fruit to go after requires like a much more complex system that you're building. So when you're doing that, when you're doing that, when you're building this much more complex system, you know, it delays the sort of search for product market fit. Um, so, you know, Similia has been around for more than a year, but we're really just trying to find product market fit right now, which has been a challenge. But on the other hand, if you build these systems that are, you know, it's just a DAO that decides everything and everyone on chain votes control everything or there's just a multisig that's trading. Um, you've really created a lot of low-hanging fruit um, for regulators, and I think regulators are going to go after it and hopefully and potentially create bad precedents for the whole industry. Understood. What are you excited about for the future? Any highlights you would like to anticipate? So I'm very ex like we have you know essentially one strategy that uses the new strategy token concept that is out this ETH BTC trend following strategy, um, but I'm much more excited about like single asset strategies coming out and a plethora of new strategists coming onto the platform. And then Sellers V2 opens up a whole new possibility of composing DeFi with Sommelier. Zaki, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. <laughs>